these are actually the boards that were on the inside of the wall in the living room. This is the way the house used to be. The studs were there. Then they put board, these boards, on the inside. And then they covered it at some point with drywall and taped that and put wallpaper and whatever. But I want to use these to make a uh, feature wall in my living room. The living room is not very big. I want to keep it bright, as in I want to keep the walls light. But I also want to give it some, you know, visual interest. The wood itself is not in bad shape. It has nail holes in it. It also has some uh, worm holes that are original to the lumber. There's quite a bit of that actually, so lots of character. What I want to do is rip them into strips that are one and three quarters inches wide. So these are more than four inches wide. I'm going to set my saw to four and a quarter and make the first cut with the grooved edge up against the fence. I calculated what I need for the wall and the total length of all the strips that I need is 368 feet. I figure I've easily got that here. Worst comes to worst, I can always cut more if I do run out, but I do believe, just a rough calculation, I've got around 400, so I should be good. I've decided to cut the face off to begin with. I may run this through the planer, but most likely I won't. What I'll wind up doing with this, I do believe, is that I'll sand it. Uh, I kind of like the circular pattern that the blade puts in it. I think it's appropriate for the, you know, the roughness of this wood. So I'm going to cut one face off on the saw, flip it over, cut the other side off. And what that'll do is it'll flatten them and clean them up. After I cut all the strips out, I cut them to the lengths that I needed to go on the wall. Then I brought all the strips into my house where I started putting on a coat of tinted urethane. Now the urethane is mostly clear, but I added a small amount of tinted urethane to it. It's poly shades, mission oak, I think it is. And what that did was it darkened the urethane just enough to give the wood kind of an antique look. I can tell you right now that this is a lot of work. This takes a long time. And really, it would be better if I could do it, say, outdoors during the summer. It would be less fumes to breathe in because doing this inside your house with oil-based urethane really stinks up the place. And also, it would dry a lot faster, especially on a warm summer's day. As it was, I had to wait two days for the urethane to dry enough so that I could sand it smooth. And that was the next step, to sand each piece on the face and the two edges smooth enough to put on the next coat of urethane. Now the next two coats were water-based polyurethane and that dries a lot faster than the oil-based stuff. It also doesn't stink up the place, which is a good thing. After the first coat of water-based polyurethane dried, I gave that a very light sanding with 220 grit paper and then applied the next coat. And the results after these two coats is a super smooth finish. The wood looks rough, but it isn't. It'll be very easy to clean. While I was waiting for that first coat to dry, I started prepping the wall. I figured I'd need a really dark color behind these slats so that you wouldn't be able to see any, you know, lightness glaring through. So I had black paint mixed up, and I gotta tell you that it's kind of scary putting that on. It's almost like it sucks all of the light out of the room. After the first coat on the wall dried, I installed the support strips that I had already painted black as well. And these are just glued to the wall using construction adhesive and pinned in place with two inch brads. So about an hour ago, I finished putting the last coat on the last half of the strips. So I'm ready to start putting them on. I've already put one on, the one across the bottom. And that'll be my guide for the rest of the courses. I'll just work my way up. I've got a space here for the uh, TV screen. 
I made the space a little bit oversized just in case I decide to get a bigger TV in the future, although I really don't think I'll, I'll do that because the room is not huge anyway. To fasten the strips, I'm using uh, one and a quarter inch pin nails. I'm using pin nails so that I won't have any holes to fill. It's very nearly impossible to see those on this wood. And I'm going to glue them also. I've got some construction adhesive here, polyurethane, that I've put inside this little plastic bag and cut the corner off so that I can squeeze out just a small amount that I need so that I don't have that all over the place. It gives me a lot more control. So this one's going to end on that support over there. I've got a couple of spacers here. These are quarter inch thick and drive in a couple of pin nails. When I cut the pieces, I made sure that they all wound up being the same length as the long ones when you join them together so there won't be any cutting. That's one thing I tried to save on when it came time to install this. So get my spacers, just pull it up tight. I'm not going to put any glue there. I'm just going to drive a couple of pins. One of the better things about using this wood is that it's really well seasoned. It's been nailed to a wall inside a house for the past 62 years. So when I cut it into strips, it stayed really straight and didn't twist. So I don't have to fight with it while I'm putting it on the wall here. So I've got the first six courses on. And now I'm up to the outlets. I've got two on this wall, one here. Since the support is over here, I had to add one right here, a short one. I got this from the one that I cut out for the TV behind me. It was already painted black, but the ends weren't, so I just used a marker to color that. And now these go on the same way. I put some glue on, like this, with the slat in place. I've also colored the ends of these as well. My spacer end, line it up with the one underneath, that's fairly important. Just pin it on. I'm getting ready to put the next one on, but I thought I would check to make sure that my coursing is still good. I don't want to wind up trying to cut a piece on a taper to fit it at the top. That will not look good. So what you need to do is you need to check it periodically and do what they call cheating. You might open the gap a little bit on one end to make up the difference or close it together a little bit or the combination of the both to try to even it out. And it's uh, these amounts that would be so small that you really won't be able to see them individually, but they add up as you go up. I'm just going to measure over here, right to the top of the support. And I got 68 and an eighth. 68 and an eighth. 68 and an eighth. So it's looking good. Uh, this is 68, and then over on the end here, it's also 68, so I need to drop it. I need to make up that one eighth of an inch on those last two. And what's happening here is the slats are going a little bit uphill. Now the reason for that is, well, okay, I cut them all with a table saw. In an ideal world, they should all be identically the same. But when you put them on, and if there's a little bit of a hook in one, and I'm only holding these on with pin nails, so it can deflect upwards on the end. And I guess that's what's happening over here. So I'll just make that correction as I'm going up on the next few. I've come up to the point where I need to start putting in these shorter ones. 
the sides here to make the opening for the TV. I say TV, but it's not actually a TV. It is a TV, although I don't use it like one. And these go up to here. I could have went straight through with the wood, but I thought it would be better if I could get the uh, screen in a, as close to the wall as I possibly could. The thing is about four inches thick, and I need to mount some kind of mounting hardware there as well. I'm thinking possibly just a plywood French cleat type thing. Put something on the wall here and put some, uh, you know, this uh, cleat on the back of the TV and just hook it up over. It's not heavy, it's an LCD thing. I'm using a square to make sure that these go up straight. Now that can cause a problem if the wall itself is not straight, but I checked all that before I got going and made sure that they were, you know, at least close. You can cheat a little bit on this again, but it's really easy to see straight lines when you've got something straight up against the edge of the TV. It'll be right here and you'll be able to see that very clearly. So I'm trying to make sure that it's at least close to straight and close to square. I'm halfway up on the other side. I'm going to do halfway up on this side as well. And then I'm going to measure it to make sure they're on the same level. Uh, the wrong tool to use in this instance anywhere during the installation of this is a level. You really don't want these strips to be level. You want them to um, line up with the things that are in the room already. The floor, first of all, if you start on the bottom, which is the right place to start, and the ceiling. They really need to line up with those things. It really doesn't matter at all if they're level. I had to check this. I started documenting this project on my website forum and this tells me the date. <laughs> I started on the 16th of December in 2015. So it's been 19 months since I last did anything with this wall. And today I'm going to finish it. Yesterday I put the LED light up in the top there. This is something that stalled me in the beginning because I had to wait for the power supply to come. And in the meantime, I got wrapped up with other things and a whole lot of other stuff happened here. I finished the in-floor heating. I finished the plywood floor in here, so everything's done. So the only thing I have left to do is to finish putting the slats on here since everything's ready. It's exactly the same procedure as before. I got my bag here with the glue in it. Put a little dab up here to hold the pieces on. Never had a failure, none of the strips release. So it doesn't take much of this glue at all to hold those in place. Which side do I want up? I think that's, all right. You know, ugly is ugly, what are you gonna do? But that was my intention here, to use these ugly wood. You know, with all the wormholes, all this character. So if asked, would I do it again? Yes, I definitely would do it again. It was a lot of work, especially all the finishing it took to get these slats so that they were all completely finished before I put them on. And of course, you know, the wrong time of the year to start doing a project like that. So if I did do it again, I would wait until warm weather at least to process the wood and get it finished so that I could take it outdoors and not have it scattered all over the house to dry. <laughs>